The Florida Gators are a seven seed in the NCAA March Madness Tournament, and we're going to have to have a conversation about that here on Locked On Gators. You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Gators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day every day. We are available daily and free. Read this in the podcast and on YouTube. Happy Monday. I'm Brandon Olson. Find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find my written work with Giants Country and NFL 33. Also, if you want to be a Locked On Gators insider, go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Gators. Get more analytics. Thrown in front of you, got charts, got a, got a whole bunch more data. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business, and that's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions do apply. And the Florida Gators wound up as a seven seed, which, yay, right? Sure, considering you didn't make the tournament last year or the year before. You you got to end that drought, which is awesome. But ending up as a seven seed doesn't make a ton of sense when you consider that going into the weekend, it was generally thought of as Florida is going to be a five or a six seed. Or even going into the weekend, you could have said Florida is going to be a six or a seven seed. Or hell, even if going into the SEC tournament, you said Florida is going to be a seven seed. Sure. But then the SEC tournament happened. And the Florida Gators won, and the Florida Gators won, and the Florida Gators won, and then the Florida Gators lost the SEC championship to a four seed, by the way. And Alabama was at a fifth seed, the team that Florida demolished and blew out on Friday night? Hmm, makes, makes a ton of sense there. Really, great job with the bracket there. Uh, the Florida Gators being a seven seed, sure, you can argue that the loss of Micah Handlogden had had a part in that. This isn't the college football playoff. We aren't the Florida State Seminoles. One injury isn't going to do that to your team, okay? Just saying. Just throwing that one out there. But the Florida Gators will play on Friday, part of the South bracket, South region bracket, seven seed. They have the potential to play either Boise State or Colorado on Friday in their first game because Boise State and Colorado will be, uh, will be that play-in game for the 10 seed in the South. So Florida will play the winner of that one. And I, I do think that Florida should be expected to win that. Like that Friday game, Florida should be expected to win because when you look at it, it's going to be Boise State or Colorado, both teams who go at a considerably slower pace than Florida has been this season. Florida can push the tempo and push the pace on both Colorado and Boise State. Uh, Florida's the 18th highest tempo team in the country. Colorado, 165th. Boise State, 221st. So Florida can push the tempo on both of them. That's what you do. Like if Boise State wins, Boise State's a slow offense that if you get scoring quickly, you can play them faster. You can make them play faster than they want to. They take almost 20 seconds per possession to get a shot up. Make them speed that up. You got to start hot, and then you just ride that wave of momentum the entire time. That, that's and obviously easier said than done. But when you're playing Boise State, that's what you do. Then you have Colorado, who Colorado is a team that obviously they're slower. They don't force turnovers well, and they don't shoot threes frequently. I don't know about you. I'd rather play that team. Colorado has a very high effective field goal percentage. They're good in a lot of the four factors that matter to Todd Golden, Florida Gators head coach, but turnover percentage, they are very bad at. They don't force enough, and they turn the ball over too much. Not a good combination to have, and they don't shoot threes frequently enough. They shoot well from three but they don't shoot threes frequently. That bodes well 
for Florida because when they're not willing to to push the tempo and they're not willing to take those still very efficient but harder shots, that bodes well for like I I want I want Colorado in this game. I do. I think Boise State's a better team. I want Colorado for the Florida Gators on Friday. Will we get that? Who knows? But Florida also has a ton to figure out. You're at a slight disadvantage, I think, by having that play in opponent because you don't have now four or five days to prep for that game. You just played on Sunday. Now you have to worry about Micah Hand locked in is out. And then you have to worry about what do we do just lineup wise, rotation wise? What's the strategy? What's the game plan? But you don't get to figure that out until after that play in game. Whereas Marquette, who plays Western Kentucky this weekend, they get to look at Western Kentucky today and really yesterday and go, okay, well, that's who we're playing. So we get to game plan for them. For Florida, you kind of have – the only thing you know that you can game plan for both of them is take care of the basketball, which you want to do every game, push the tempo, which they do every game, shoot more threes than the opponent, which Florida does anyway. But you don't get to adjust for anything else. You don't have that, that freedom to make those changes there. If Florida wins, they will take on the winner of Marquette or Western Kentucky. Obviously, <laughs> you want to see Western Kentucky if you're Florida. Uh, Florida does match up relatively well against Marquette, but that's looking ahead. You still have to worry about Colorado, Boise State. And I, I'll say this, I've been, I, I feel like I've been pessimistic on the Florida Gators this season because they've been so inefficient and so inconsistent in some areas that drive me crazy. Like if you're a bad free throw shooting team, that drives me freaking nuts. I can't stand bad free throw shooting. I don't know what it is about me. I'm not good at any aspect of basketball that involves putting the ball in the hoop. But something about bad free throw shooting just drives me freaking crazy. And for the Florida Gators, they've been pretty bad there. They've turned the ball over at crucial moments pretty consistently. That's frustrating as well. Like I've been, that's why I've been down on them. However, I said this prior to the season. I said this after last season, and I said this with Isaac Shade of Lockdown College Basketball, who, by the way, Isaac Shade, Andy Patton, um, their live stream yesterday during Selection Sunday show, beautiful, magnificent. I loved it. Um, we're getting a lot of in-depth analysis there that we weren't getting from watching TV. But I said it when I had Isaac on the show at the start of the year. I said, if the Florida Gators make the tournament this year, I will be happy. That was my bar for the 2023-2024 season. Make the tournament, and I'll be happy. Not only did you make the tournament, you made the tournament, and you're a seven seed. Like you're, you're in that top half, which, again, yeah, sure, should have been a six, maybe a five, but you won where it counted. You won where it mattered, and, and, and you got yourself to be a seven seed. So... At this point, I'm like playing with house money. There's going to be things I'm critical of if, if you're not doing, or if I have issues with some of the coaching decisions, which we'll talk about in the next segment. But if I have some of the issues with coaching decisions or whatever it is, obviously I'm not just like, oh, we're here. Anything can happen now. But like, as far as is this season a success? Absolutely. You can get bounced and it's a success. You went into the SEC championship. You were a seven seed in the NCAA tournament. This was a successful season for the Florida Gators. Okay, and and for Todd Bolden in year two, no easy task, no small feat. Absolutely deserves his flowers and his credit for the job that he's done. Again, not perfect, but he's done a, a good job, and he's exceeded my expectations already. So kudos to Todd Golden. We are about to talk about the Sunday game against Auburn, the SEC championship, and what Florida has to do to prepare for really the rest of the for the start of the NCAA tournament. But first, a quick word from a couple sponsors. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out. A team that's pushed it farther than the rest, just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level. It's not Houston. Houston doesn't deserve the name of an armada. Mm -mm. Not, af not after the whooping you took uh, the other day. No, you don't deserve that. You don't. Utah State deserves to be a Nissan Rogue. They do, and that's a hell of a compliment. The team absolutely surprised everyone 
with performances against New Mexico, Fresno State, dogs. Just want to say that one. Just want to say that. Giving them their first outright Mountain West title in program history. They say win life, go rogue. It's exactly what the Utah State Aggies have done. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. And I don't know about you, but now I have every intention of sitting down and watching hours and hours and hours of basketball for the next couple weeks, right? Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs or the Fire TV stick that I have in the back of my TV in the living room. If you were curious about that, whether it's opening weekend of baseball or the March Madness Tournament. NCAA College Basketball Tournament is here. You're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from all of your favorite sports brands for free. And that includes all of us with Locked On. Yeah, this UGG mug, you can see on Fire TV channels. Pretty sick, right? It, it's pretty sick. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. And if you haven't checked out Fire TV channels yet, you should. Just trust me on this. To learn more, visit amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. Thanks again for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day every day. We are available daily and free right in the podcast. And I do mean daily. We had Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We were there the whole the whole weekend. We were there. Just saying. Every day. And guess what? Every game of the tournament, we're going to be here. We're going to be going live after all of them because it's a hell of a time to be a Florida Gator fan, man. But looking at the Auburn game, I think my biggest criticism was lineup management. Micah Hanlockton suffered a very unfortunate injury to his lower left leg like three minutes into the game. Um, It was gross and brutal and oh my god i wish nothing but the speediest recovery for for micah um that was brutal to watch um you, you hate to see stuff like that happen like we've seen it in football quite a few times it happens but man um yikes it, it was it was rough hoping the best recovery for him um but he got hurt and then for the remainder of the game the Florida Gators, who usually run with an eight-man lineup, went with a seven-man lineup. And I just I can't get behind that reason. I like there's no line of logic that you can give me that makes me go, oh, that's that was a good decision. Because I understand going eight-man lineups and, and having guys who could play multiple spots and totally get that. And Micah Hanlock was part of that eight-man rotation, got hurt and then just not making the change to seven. Like, these guys played on Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday evening, and then Sunday early afternoon. It was 1 o'clock, so very early afternoon. And you had guys who, despite blowing out Alabama, you had three guys play 30-plus minutes, and then those three guys all came out, and they played on Saturday. They started, they played a lot in a close game. And then on Sunday, they came in and they had to play a lot. And they, like, those were the three guys that struggled a lot. Like, Walter Clayton Jr. shot horribly. And for really the entire Florida Gators team, so many of their threes, even free throws, were short of the mark. They were all short. That's like, yeah, because their legs are exhausted. They've been running for hours, legitimately. Walter Clayton played what? Uh, an hour and a half of of basketball from just Thursday to Saturday and then had to go play on Sunday against a physical Auburn team. That's full court pressing from the jump. Come on. And like they, they had to do that gas. There was no need to play these guys 33, 32 or 30 minutes on Friday against Alabama. You were a big at that point. Like the, you like pull them earlier. It was, a, it was a blowout. And yeah, Florida ended up winning by like 14, but we we know what it was. We know what happened in that game. So for Florida, like they were exhausted. I don't know how anybody could have gone out. The fact that they kept it as close as they did for as long as they did was impressive. Just that. Like, I don't know how you can go into that with those lineups and go, we'll be all right. Like, we'll be able to handle that for another 40 minutes. Not, not the way Auburn plays defense. 
Like you, you should know better than that. And I understand, you know, you don't have 10 guys that you feel comfortable playing, but there's one guy who didn't play on Saturday, didn't play on Sunday. And the last time that you faced off with Auburn earlier this season, he was your leading scorer in a big win. I'm not saying he would have replicated that. That first game was Auburn coming off a short week, if not mistaken, with Florida coming off a bye in Gainesville. So Florida had a lot going for them, but Riley Cool had a great game against Auburn last time they played. He did. And didn't touch the court on Saturday or Sunday. Which was wild to me. Like, and then I fully understand Saturday, Denzel Aberdeen, Denzel Aberdeen had a massive game against Texas AM. It, it was truly an incredible performance for Denzel Aberdeen, which again, I'm gonna say called it when he committed to Florida. He was the one he was one that I was like, Oh, I love his game. Nailed it. Um, but great game Saturday. Played Sunday too, played decently well. But like when Micah Hanlon thing got hurt, why would you not go, all right, we're going to keep it with an eight-man rotation, but Riley Kugel's going to be coming out. And I get it. He has his boneheaded moments. He has his his plays where it just doesn't even look like he's trying. It should, and I, I'm not even saying, like, oh, Riley Kugel's so amazing. You have to play him all the time. What I am saying is that Riley Kugel can get hot in a minute. He can't. We've seen him do it countless times in microwave. So Riley Kugel can get hot in a minute. He can play multiple spots on the floor. He can create transition plays. And you have your your starting center get hurt. And instead, you choose to watch Alex Condon get bullied by uh, Jani Broom. Like, man, it's hard for me to just go, oh, yeah, that was the good decision. That was the right choice. And again, I'm not someone who's like Riley Google first pick in the draft, but he's someone that you know can contribute and you know had success against Auburn and he doesn't touch the court in a game where you have seven players playing. Stuff like that is just the stuff that I I can't be like, oh yeah, this, this was good. And again, like I said, you made it further than I thought you would. You did. You've made it further than I thought you would. You've got a, a higher seed in the tournament than I thought you'd be. Great job. However, there are still some flaws that are pretty glaring, and that's one of them. Just sticking to that rotation there, the the time management that we saw really throughout the whole season. It's like it's fine if you convince these kids, hey, like you're gonna play, you know, 32 minutes a night, twice a week, like 32 minutes a night, twice a week. And that's fine, right? No one's going to hate that as a player because they're used to doing that. What they're not used to doing is doing it four days in a row. That's that's not a smart decision to make now, is it? Just saying. But again, we are going to talk about Todd Golden because Todd Golden, Billy Napier, brought in the same season. And uh, yeah, there's there's parallels there that we can talk about. But first, we're going to get a quick word from LinkedIn. Today's episode of Lockdown Gators is brought to you by LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. And LinkedIn isn't just another job board. Flora Victorious has a job posted on LinkedIn right now. Just saying, marketing manager. You do it. Like, like, that's how serious it is, all right? That's how important and helpful it is. Just if you're a Florida fan, that, I feel like that should be comforting, right? Go to your job for LinkedIn.com slash lockdown college. That's LinkedIn.com slash lockdown college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day. Every day, we are available daily and free for this in the podcast and on YouTube. And yeah, like I mentioned, Florida Gators, Todd Golden, Billy Napier, there's some parallels through when they were brought in because of course Billy Napier was brought in after the 2021 season for the Florida Gators football team and now if Mike White was out after that same basketball season Todd Golden got hired to do that job so getting hired at the same time we're both 
historic programs are not having a good go of things at the minute. There's going to be parallels and constant comparisons between these two coaches of, of Billy Napier and Todd Golden. And the conversation started up on, on Twitter this weekend of like, how, how has Todd Golden found this success and Billy Napier hasn't? And there's a two prong answer to that here. One, it's harder to turn around a football program at the college level, or at, at any level, really. It's harder to turn around a football program than it is to turn around a basketball program. Happens a lot. Basketball team in college gets a, a high-ranked freshman or a portal guy, and all of a sudden they're a good NCAA team, like a good tournament team. In the NBA, get a great ball-handling point guard through small forward, any of those positions, or a center like Wemby, and all of a sudden you go from, oh, they're, they're really bad to might be pretty good. Like, like a player can make a huge change like that. So obviously you, you hit two or three of those in basketball and you can turn around a program. Football, it's much harder because football, like you can't even go, oh, well, we just brought in this superstar at the most important position, point guard, quarterback, whatever it is. Because in football, those guys don't play defense. So it, that's what I'm saying where you have to fill out way more positions that can play both sides for football, basketball, you can get a star or a couple guys and become a significantly better program. So yes, it's harder to turn around a football program than it's to turn around a basketball program. However, even relative to those expectations or those measurements, whatever we want to call it, Todd Golden has done a better job of turning it around. Like again, you just need a couple basketball transfer portal players, and, and you could be golden. Football, not so much. However, Todd Golden has done a better job of bringing in those players. His first year was really bad with the portal, and, and we kind of knew, you know, after watching the games, we can kind of tell, all right, first year, he rushed through it. He rushed the evals. He rushed everything. Second year, he's got two players on his roster that just played significant time during the SEC championship that only had one SEC school offer them each. Like that's the kind of evaluation that we're talking about in year two. When we talk about where the Florida Gators football team is compared to where they were two years ago, we're not going to be as favorable as when we're talking about where the Florida Gators basketball team was under Mike White to where they are now two years later. Both coaches got hired to the idea of, this needs to be a rebuild. Todd Golden's done his significantly better so far. Like where Todd Golden is at the rebuild of Florida Gators basketball is way ahead of where Billy Napier is in turning around Florida Gators football or where they are relative to expectations even. But man, like Todd Golden this year has been <laughs> incredible. Um, and and that, that level, that comparison, that ranking – it could be more evident than ever considering that we're going to have this basketball season end and then football start in a few months. Whereas we just saw what happened with football and then now we're watching basketball succeed. Like that comparison just gets made more glaring. However, university wise football is going to hold more weight than basketball. So I'm not going to say like, Oh, this saves Scott Strickland's career, but the hire of Todd Golden, I think we can, pretty much unanimously agree that this is a great hire. I'm not saying Florida Gators basketball is back to national championship level, but you at least have faith in Todd Golden for the most part. There's still these glaring issues, but Florida Gators could be looking at basketball success sooner rather than later. It's a great time to be a Florida Gators fan. We're going to take a more in-depth look when this actual season's over of Todd Golden versus Billy Napier. But thanks for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day every day. We are available daily and free ravens in the podcast. We'll be back tomorrow. Talk more Florida Gators basketball and football, hopefully. Just saying. For Lockdown Gators, I'm Brandon Olson. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work with Giants, Country, and NFL 33, and I'll see you all next time.